But after talking about the basic of a two-period model, I want to introduce a theory which is called Ricardian equivalence. So for this particular theory, it is developed based on the concept that we learn related to intertemporal budget constraint and the feature of the consumption and smoothing. So now let's look at what does this Ricardian equivalence say. It says that given a fixed pattern of government spending, a cut in current taxes can affect the timing of the tax collection but not the ultimate tax burden borne by consumers. So what does this description mean? It means that even though the government cuts tax today, as long as the government did not change how much they spent, then it will not affect the tax burden borne by the consumers. That is because in here we assume that the government did not change their spending. Therefore, a cut in the tax implies that the government should incur more debt right now and then later on they need to pay it back. Given that the government need to pay it back, the government need to collect tax or more tax in the future when they want to pay it back. And then we eventually need to pay for the debt anyhow unless the government pay the debt after we die. So how could this theory be correct? For sure, to form a theory, we need to make assumptions. So let's look at the assumption for this theory. So the first theory we made is that the pattern of the government spending remains, which means that there is no cut in government spending. The second assumption we made in here is that all the government spending needs to be paid back by tax in the long run. The third assumption we make is that the gap of the tax and the spending is financed by government bond. This means that when the government faces the deficit, the government need to borrow using bonds. The next assumption we make is that the government borrowing has to be financed by tax collection. That is, when the government reduces the tax, then it means that it's possible that the government will occur new debts. Then by the time when the government want to pay back the debt, they need to raise the tax in order to finance the debt and the existing spending. The last assumption we make is that the people are forward looking. When an individual is forward looking, it means that that person will plan ahead before the things happen. So in this example, we assume that the individuals knows what the government is doing. For example, that the government will raise the tax in the future in order to finance the tax cut today. So this individual knows that the government will increase tax tomorrow. So in today, when they are making the consumption and saving decisions, they will take that into account. So based on these assumptions, this proposition has the following implication. It says that if there is a cut in current taxes today with no reduction in government spending, the tax cut will lead to more government debt in the future. That is because the government did not try to spend less, and then, but their income become less because they cut the current taxes. Because of that, in order to finance the gap between the spending and the cut, so then the government need to issue bonds to finance this gap. Because of that, the government has to pay back this gap, that is the debt in the future. Because we assume that the government need to finance the debt using the taxes. Therefore, in the future, when they want to pay back the principal and the interest of the bonds, then they need to for sure increase the tax to finance the debt payment. Because of that, the tax cut today is equivalent to future tax increase. Therefore, a forward-looking individual who is uh, who know this what is happening beforehand will not change his her future consumption pattern because in terms of present value of lifetime resources, the resources they have before the cut 
and after the cut are exactly the same, therefore there is no need to change their consumption behavior. So what we are going to do next is to use an example to illustrate the implication of this proposition by showing the proof that when the government cut the tax and finance the new debt using the bonds, and then it will not change the present value of the lifetime resources. So we assume in this economy, the individual receives the income Y1 and Y2 in the first period and the second period. The amount remains the same before and after the tax cut. And then uh, the individual need to choose how much they want to consume for the first period and the second period. So the first period consumption and the second period consumption are the choice variable for this problem that we want to solve. Then for the government of this economy, before the tax cut, they tax the amount T1 in the first period and they tax the amount T2 in the second period and they choose to spend amount G. But then after the tax cut, they cut it by the delta T amount. Then the new tax for the first period equals T1 minus delta T. But then how to finance the amount that is cut? Well, they need to issue bonds and the amounts of the bond they issue will exactly equal the tax cut and they need to pay it back at T equal to. So then what will be the amount they need to pay back? Well, given that they issue bonds in the first period by the delta T, so that it means that when they pay back, they need to pay back delta T multiplied by one plus R because they not only to pay back the principal, but also the interest. So then given that we assume all the government spending need to finance by tax, therefore the tax need to increase by the same amount of the bonds payment, which includes the principal and the interest in the second period. Therefore, the new tax that need to be collected in the second period will equal to the tax amount that is collected in the first period plus the tax increase that is needed to finance the bond payment, which is B multiplied by 1 plus R. Given that the amount of the bond issues equal to the amount of the tax cut, therefore we know B equals delta T. We can substitute it in and then we are going to get that the new tax that is collected after the tax cut in the second period equals the original amount of the tax that is collected, which is T2 plus the delta T multiplied by 1 plus R. So now we have everything set for the basic information for this economy. So then now we want to show that the present value of the lifetime resources for an individual is the same before the tax cut and after the tax cut. So then before the tax cut, the present value of the lifetime resources an individual have is the first period income minus the tax that they pay plus the second period income minus the second period tax paid divided by 1 plus R. So this is the amount of the present value lifetime resources an individual have before the tax cut. So then what will be the present value of the lifetime resources after the tax cut? Well, the new present value after the tax cut will equal the first period income minus the new tax plus the second period income minus the new tax in the second period divided by 1 plus R. Let me rewrite this equation, leaving the new tax amount for the first period and second period, and then see what we need to put in. So in here, given that the new tax in the first period equals T1 minus delta T, so we plug it in here, for the second period new tax, we know that it equals T2 plus delta T multiplied by 1 plus R. So then we can rearrange the equation and then we are going to have y1 minus t1 plus delta t plus y2 minus t2 divided by 1 plus r minus delta t multiplied by 1 plus r and divided by 1 plus r. And then you will see that for the last term of the equation, the 1 plus r can be canceled 
and then it can further cancel out with the delta t uh, for the first period. So then what we end up to have is exactly the same as the present value of the lifetime resources that we got before the tax cut, which is y1 minus t1 plus y2 minus t2 divided by 1 plus r. So then in here, we know that given that the present value of the lifetime resources before and after the tax cut are exactly the same, when the individual are making the decision about how much they want to consume today and tomorrow, they have the same constraint and same utility. So then the decision rule will remain the same. So in here, we prove that even though the government cut the tax today, the individual will keep the same consumption pattern given that their present value of the lifetime resources are exactly the same before the tax cut and after the tax cut. And that is the proposition of the Ricardian equivalence. So given that the present value remains the same before and after the tax cut, the real interest rate is the same before and after the tax cut, the consumption is the same before and after the tax cut for the first period and the second period. We want to ask that given that the proposition of the Ricardian equivalence hold, how will that affect the individual saving as well as the national savings? It turns out that for an individual, the amount they save, which is the private saving, will equal the income they receive, which is Y1, minus the tax they paid and minus their consumption. So before the tax cut, the private saving equals Y1 minus T1 minus C1. So then how about after the tax cut? Well, after the tax cut, the individual saving, which is the private saving, will equals Y1 minus T1 plus minus C1. So the difference here is that after the tax cut, the individual need to pay less tax. So then given that the new tax is less than the old tax, so then it turned out that the private saving will increase after the tax cut. How about the national savings? For national savings, we know it will include the private saving plus the government saving. And then we already know that the private saving increased. So then how about the government saving? So then let's look at the government saving. The government saving equals the tax they collected minus their spending, which is G. So then the government saving before the tax cut is T1 minus G. And the government saving after the tax cut is T1 plus minus G. Given that the government cuts tax, so we know that the T1 plan is less than T1, so then what it turned out to be is that the government savings after the tax cut will be less than the government saving before the tax cut. So then what is the amount of the national saving? What we know is that the national saving is the add up of the private saving and the government saving. In here, we know before the tax cut, the national saving will equal to the amount of the private saving, which is Y1 minus T1 minus C1, plus the government saving, which is T1 minus G. So then it turned out to be Y1 minus C1 minus G because the T1 got canceled. Then how about after the tax cut? The new national saving after the tax cut will again equal to the saving of the private sector, which is now is Y1 minus T1 plus minus C1, and then plus the new government saving, which is T1 plus minus G. Again, given that the T1 plan got canceled, so what it turned out to be is Y1 minus C1 minus G. So in here, we show that the national saving before the tax cut and after the tax cut are exactly the same. However, for private sectors, the private sector saving will be more than before the tax cut versus after the tax cut. 
So in conclusion, we say the private saving rises and the government saving falls when facing a tax cut. Yet the national saving is the sum of the two, therefore it remains the same before and after the tax cut. So this is hold when the Ricardian equivalence hold. And in here, we complete the discussion related to Ricardian equivalence.